What's up, everybody? It's me, JB, the ultimate writer from the Fight Bros podcast. Myself and Anadu caught up last night. We had a good chat about a bunch of stuff. Uh, we did some in-the-pocket recent MMA news. We talked about the ongoing fallout from UFC 200, including Mark Hunt, Brock Lesnar, etc. Uh, we talk about PEDS in MMA, which is part of that discussion. We also uh, touch on Benson Henderson and in an interview that he did with... Ariel Halwani, where he talks about the contrast between the sponsorship available to Bellator athletes and the sponsorship available to UFC athletes. Um, we move on to the UFC 202 breakdown and Anaru's overwhelming love for Conor McGregor, put some respect on his name, and um, the last thing that we touch on is the UFC Fighters Association, but there's a bit more stuff in there too. Let us know what you think in the comments below, and subscribe. Cheers. What's up, everybody? This is the Five Price Podcast. You're with myself, JB. And... Kia ora. It's here. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me, JB. And uh, nice to be here on a lovely, cool Sunday night, mate, talking shit. And um, what are we talking about today? Well, i got a bunch of stuff that, um, that has popped up over the last sort of 24 hours, etc. And... Um, I'm sure you've got some stuff that you're keen to talk about as well. Uh, I, that's right. Um, very keen to get a few things off my chest. Up, mate. Um, you caught up with Ev Ting. I did too. I did that yesterday or the day before. Um, he, he's a good a dude, interview. man. He's a good dude. Yeah, yeah it was easy to talk to. Um, he always had something to say, you know, and, and I just wish him all the best. You know, I met that dude... Um, I don't know, five years ago maybe, maybe six, at Auckland MMA. And um, before that, I'd seen him fight a couple of times under the Supremacy and ICNZ, I believe. And I remember the yeah. first time I saw him at um, Supremacy, man, and I think he, he did a flying knee, maybe finished this dude with a, a head kick and some ground and pound. And that's, that was all I needed to see him. And I, I, I remember that dude forever after that. And then just meeting him and, and him coaching me, for a few months there, man, where he's, he's, I just know he's a really good dude and I just want to support him any way I can, you know? Yeah, it was great. Like, he was one of my very first interviews. Like, you know, he was, he was like halfway through a weight cut. He was filling out, um, interview questions from me, etc., emailing them back. And dude, he was, he's a great guy and, you know, um, he's always been supportive and like yourself, I've always been supportive of Ev. Yeah. Yeah, just want to see him do well, you know, and, and just want to know where he's at and what's happening. Um, I was over the moon when I heard he was fighting Rob at main event in, in Malaysia where he was yeah. born. Fantastic yeah. news, man. That's, that's what I want to hear. Yeah, that's right. It's awesome to see a Kiwi doing so well, especially, um, you know, the Kiwi Malaysian who can do so well in his hometown um, and as well as represent New Zealand. Like, you know, like you said in the interview, he'll always represent Auckland MMA. Um, and, you know, he'll always have a part in New Zealand MMA and our scene himself. So it was, that was a great interview, dude. Yeah, cheers, man. And, like, just a good dude, a good uh, proponent of the sport, respectful, like, you know, someone you, you, you'd you like your kid to go, oh, man, that dude, Ev Ting, oh, I'd love to be like him or, you know, the way yeah. he carries himself. Man, that'd be cool. Like like uh, someone was talking about that. If, if Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, if some if your kid had Stephen Wonderboy Thompson's post on the wall, you'd be like, "Fuck yeah, bro!" Like look up to that dude. You know, there's some there's some out there that you probably might not think that way. No, no, that's right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, you know, obviously, fighters come in all shapes, sizes, and personalities. So, um, you know, not like like any human being. <clears throat> Then not not every one of them is an example that you'd want you'd want your kids to follow. But yeah, um, right. speaking of people who are um, starting to make big moves, um, Cody Garbrandt has um, he has been getting into a bit of a social media tussle at least with um, Dominic Cruz. Uh, Cruz has been running his mouth. Um, he's been saying that um, he is going to stitch Cody Garbrandt's mouth shut. <laughs> Um, and Cody Garbrandt has come back and um, basically said, let's do this then. You know, um, the um, 
MMA junkie caught up with him. Um, yeah, he had a lot to say, a definite, a huge amount to say, to be honest. So, um, you yeah, know, that looks like it's one that's brewing. Looks like a good fight coming up. Um, like, your thoughts on that? Um, what I know is after, after, so I haven't, I haven't seen or read as much as you have at this point in time, but after the, the second or third, the third Uriah fight, I mean, Uriah was was telling was talking about Cody, and Dominic seemed to like brush it off as he didn't even know who Cody, who the hell Cody was. And then today or yesterday, I, I saw the article about Dominic Cruz. Um, he, yeah, he's going to have to drink through a straw, eat through a straw, and uh, that yeah. it was out of the blues to me. I haven't I haven't caught up, but my thoughts on that is uh, I don't see anyone beating Dominic Cruz at the moment, and. But then Cody obviously has that KO power and and the hunger and the you know all that history alpha male stuff you know I'd watch it it sounds that's that's a sold fight to me I'd I'd, I'd watch that in a heartbeat yeah dude like that is you know um, that that's um, that's that's something that he mentions you know he talks about it being a great marketable fight I agree with you and um, also you know I'm, I'm of the same mind Dominic Cruz he has just shown that he is the next level and um, in his absence you know other people stepped up they kind of looked like they might have been getting to that level but um, he he sort of exposed um, that he is he is actually the next level still. Yeah, man, and and I don't know about you, but I see there's almost this um, not awakening. It's a bit powerful, but um, the fighters the fighters are sitting back after that fight. You know, they're not they're not well. Some of them they're not calling out someone straight away, and they sit back and they and they listen to the social media and they and they get their feelings, and then they and then they do pick that fight. You know, he doesn't have to fight Cody, but he knows it'll sell. You know, and Dominic's not the most exciting guy in the world. He's very technical, and and a lot of mm. a lot of guys, martial artists or guys, you know, like watching his style. But but that fight sells. You know, the history. He's picked a good opponent there. That that's a done deal, as far as I'm concerned. Just from what you've said, it's done. Yeah, that's that's a um, you know, it's uh, like you say, it's a continuation of the Faber um, Alpha Male Alpha Fail as Cruz likes to call them. Uh, it's yeah, it's just, you know, it's that same storyline just getting more and more developed. And, you know, it's like he's he's the boss that has shut down everyone, you know, past and present from that team. Like, you know, he shut down the king of that of that hill as well, you know, as well as the guy who wanted to be the king and then moved moved up north to go and be the king in his own hill. Um, so, yeah, you know, he has he's done all the work. So Cody Garbrandt, he's more of a traditional sort of heavy-handed striker. Um but, you know, obviously, Alpha Male, they all have a pedigree in the striking as well as the grinding. Yeah, that story is, yeah, it writes itself. It's an easy fight to sell. Um, obviously, it's I mean, he's adding, he's adding to the fire, like, I'll, you know, I'll break your mouth. I don't know, last time fucking Dominic Cruz broke anyone's mouth or even came close <laughs> to it, you know, but but that sells a fight, you know. It's, that's done in my, yeah. So that's a good fight. I'll like um, another fight, I would I would definitely watch with Cruz involved would be the Mighty Mouse rematch. Absolutely, that's the other one. Um, but Mighty Mouse wants to break records. He said it himself. He wants yeah. to break records, and then and then that super fight will come. But fucking, I I, I don't like waiting for super fights. You know. Yeah. Myself, I'm selfish. I want the super fight as soon as I can get the super fight, or you miss out like your GSP and Silver or, or Silver and Jones. You know that shit just is never going to happen now. You know, uh, well, any fight. Um, you know, we've seen in the past any fight could be a super fight. You know, there there are fights on the undercards and on the free fight pass prelims that are better than main event cards. You know, yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, but the, you know yeah, the context it's, I'm, I'm talking about is like two champs and, or championships, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. yeah Speaking but. of GSP, um, obviously this week um, Tyron Woodley, he uh, Dana White has announced a an opponent for him. Are you up to up to speed with that one? Obviously, I heard that today, and it will be my man Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. He's he's coming in swinging, bro. And yep. Tyron's going to walk into the wood chipper, and it's going to be glorious. 
I believe. Yeah, well, that's right. You know, um, uh, Thompson, if he can just play it smart, play it safe, um, use his elusive um, athleticism, etc., cetera, um, to, to tire out Woodley and then just, yep. just put him away. And, you know, obviously that's a lot of people's plans, but in terms of athleticism to match Tyron Woodley, um, you know, not many people are up there with um, 7-1 boy Thompson. No, not at all. And and the elusive, the karate elusive style, the switching mm-hmm. of the stances, you know, the, that's got to play into he, You know, we know Tyron's going to try and get that massive, massive strike, you know, and that's got to be one of the hardest guys to hit with, something like that. So, awesome fight, man. And well-deserved to Stephen um, Thompson, you know. I thought it might have gone to GSP, but GSP seems to be just fucking fucking us around. I don't know what's happening there. Well, Woodley Maybe actually has um, and Woodley has come back and said um, you know, just just everyone just chill out, you know. I, I'll, he's like, I'm the champion, you know. He's like, I'm going to... He's actually come back and said I'll, I'll, I'll be the one who decides who the fight is and when the fight is. So, um, you know, there could be a bit of beef, beef brewing there. We've seen what's happened in the past when people have tried to sort of um, bite the hand that feeds them in the UFC, so you never know what could be growing there. Yeah, I think he's pissing in the wind, mate. He might be trying to get a bit more money, but yeah, Dana yeah. decides, uh, Joe Silver decides, and Sean Selby decides. Well, you know, Tyron's not deciding shit, but he's not deciding shit. <laughs> and, um, but I, I like, you know, this is all like this education of the fighters of, you know, keep playing, man. Like, you know, you might get another extra 100 Gs yeah. or fucking... Or, and, and you just keep your name in there and then Dana's going to retort and then it's, it's, it's all games, yeah. bro. You know, it builds more hype for the fight. Exactly, that's right. It, there really isn't a loser um, unless, you know, unless the fight breaks down due to USADA testing, things like that. Yeah, or injuries, um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, speaking of uh, some recent testing, Ken Shamrock, obviously um, his most recent fight was against... Um, Hoist Gracie lost and uh, then was was done for, um, for pissing incredibly hot. His testosterone to epi testosterone level was twelve and a half to one. Wow! So that's yeah, that's um, like that. I believe that's like up there in Overeem sort of sort of level. He was thirteen Overeem to one. Levels? Yeah, I think it's six. Was it six normal? Six. Yeah. So you know, the, the, you know, Shamrock is forty plus, and he's got twice as much testosterone as a twenty-year-old. Bro, you know, it's it's Ken Shamrock we're talking about here. It was his fucking, <laughs> it was his what was it? His third fight with Hoist, or whatever. He yeah. needed, he wanted to win that fight, man. He wanted to win that fight. Year anniversary. Yeah, bro, and I wanted him to win that fight, and he fucking got. Wow, it looked like he got yeah. need in the balls, but it didn't look that hard. And he and he went down, and he got fucking ground and powdered. That was a yeah. while ago now. Did he get ground and powdered out by Hoist Gracie? Like I, I would have done anything <laughs> to win that fight as well, bro. You know, and I, I, I got nothing yeah. bad to say about Ken Shamrock. He's a fucking legend. So, um, uh, you just saw something funny on Mark's page. Me, I just did see something funny on Mark's page. <sighs> Mark has been going very off. hard. Off. He's been going off on his on his social media regarding the Brock Lesnar failed drug test that we all knew he was going to fail. The thing the thing that's that's not concerning me, but the th- I guess the thing that that I'm seeing a lot now is he has a very good point, but he seems to go on his page and and relish. The negative, the negative comments. He seems to bathe in it, and and I mean, so far as to two days ago, he was going to go meet a guy down at the pub and teach him how to fight. He was asking this guy to friend request him. He was asking this guy for his address, and that might be all fun and games, but it's the negative energy he's bringing on mm. and, and involving himself in, where he he doesn't respond to anyone who's saying. Yeah, Mark, That's fucking, true. you deserve that money, bro. I, I fucking love you. He he's only responding to to the trolls, and that's yep. unhealthy. I've seen that before. It's not a good thing. You want to just 
you don't want all that negative. I mean, imagine how he feels when he gets off that computer. He, I mean, he might think that he is uh, potentially, you know, sticking it up them, but I mean, they are nobodies. And here's Mark Hunt, and he's wasting all that energy and that time on these people. I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's great. I still saying, you know, you don't want to lower yourself to um to other people's standards. Yeah. Yeah, I just that's my two cents about that. I mean, he he's got a lot of support, and he doesn't give any of those guys the time of day. Maybe maybe I haven't seen it. Maybe he does, but I know I can scroll right now and see him replying to ten fucking trolls easy, and because I just fucking looked at it. That's right. And um, and I don't think that's yeah, man. Why, bro? You're Mark fucking Hunt, man. Like, don't feed those trolls, man. Fuck them. I said to, um, sorry, oh, no, to back. Dan Hooker, I caught up with him the other week, and, you know, he said exactly that. You know, he said, don't feed the trolls, um, which is, you know, that's, that's that's probably the best sentiment there is. There's no point giving those guys more ammo, as well as potentially turning your supporters to detractors. Yeah, I've, what I've seen, because obviously I follow Mark uh, constantly as... It's yeah. just multiplying and multiplying and multiplying. And and there was a guy, I mean, it's like this now. There was a guy there, he said something fucking stupid. And then the next guy goes, oh, how many, uh, called him out on it, right? And his answer was, I just wanted Mark to fucking reply to me. Wow, that, see, that's, that's all him. he was, that's what he was there for. He just wanted yeah. that, you know, I feeling, know. Uh, which some people have out there in the fucking that, you know, if I can get, do whatever I have to do to get Mark to fucking know that I'm alive, that's enough. And it's, it's all negative because that's what he's um, feeding off at the moment. Attraction, you know. If you want to yeah. focus on everything negative, then, you know, the negativity will find you. Oh, yeah, man. It, and it's growing and growing. It has, yeah. I don't know. It's my thoughts on it. What do you think? Yeah, well, you know, I, I am a big one for not feeding the trolls. Um, you know, you will never win. You can't win. There's more no, trolls than there are of you. You know, it's not one versus yep. one in every battle. It's one versus everyone. Like, and, you know, like, like I said, um, you know, turning your the people who have been fans of yours for a long time, turning them into fence sitters now and, you know, some of them just becoming not fans of his anymore because of the way he's been, he's, he's been acting. You know, right or wrong, um, you know, it's up to him how he wants to act. But, you know, people can, uh, you know, it's obviously going to have repercussions. Totally. Yeah, I mean, it's, of course, it's his, that's his soapbox, you know, to stand up and, and put his yeah. thoughts out there to the world. No one, I don't, I'm not telling him, I'm just having a thought on what I'm seeing. Um, yeah. And I'm seeing just the negativity grow, grow and grow. And then, and then, like I said, I see one guy just, just trying to, fucking put his two cents in just to get oh Mark Hunt fucking talk to me mate. you know and then and then no no or well, not regard but like he's not replying to any of his supporters yeah yeah and that's it's that's weird. you know that's where his strength is you know and his supporters not in the people who are trying to bait him to get a response um because you know those people aren't you know, he should he shouldn't be stooping to their level as as we've said, you know, it's um it's kind of not the behaviour that that you would want. Like after reading his biography, you know, um you would hope that he, he was in a different place to where he has been over the last sort of twenty years. But um, you know, it's it it seems that the Brock thing has really has really got to him. Yeah. It, well uh, yeah, it really, really has. I mean and it's and it maybe it's the three the three now, the fucking Antonio Silva, the Frank yep. Beer, and now Brock. And, the straw uh, that broke the camel's back. Yeah, and the money, yeah, you know, too much. The money seems to have been, um, been one of the huge contributing factors, um, you know, because Brock, Brock take home 12, is that 12 million? 12, That's reported confirmed. 12, it could be as high as 15. Um, Brock, Man, that, that money... So what what did Mark get if we if we could say that Brock got potentially twelve thirteen, I could say safely that Mark got over one. 
Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like you know, I, I don't, I don't know what his pay per view point steal is. No, um, I, with, but um, you know, his um, his retainer is high enough. I think um, Lucas mentioned offline that it was his entire fight contract was maybe up to nine million spread over the entire deal. So you know, yeah, he's, okay. he's he's already he's already up bank. You know, so it's um, it's just you know, if you compare nine million over half a dozen fights, for instance, three of them are against guys who are on PEDs. And then you compare that to Brock Lesnar making 12 to 15 off one fight. You know, it's it's pretty easy to see why Mark feels the way he does. Yes, but let's talk about Brock Lesnar. I mean, he gets paid that much for a reason. Yeah. He is Brock Lesnar. He's the biggest draw that the UFC has ever had. That's a fact. The two, I think he's got the one and number one and two pay-per-view records. Oh. I mean, there's, there's, you know, we're not just giving Brock Lesnar money because cause he's a big cunt. It's because he yeah. is the show, man. They brought him in to fix. I believe they knew John was going to get fucking pulled. I believe they knew they needed something. Connor was out. And yeah. Brock Lesnar saved the day. I mean, what he gets paid is really irrelevant to us. The I think the the issue here is is for Mark. I think, and I think he's on the right track, man. If you lose if if you lose money for coming in overweight, you should fucking lose money for getting busted. It should have just been sure. nothing. It sh- it shouldn't be nothing. It sh- you should lose some of that money. That's right, because otherwise, guys, are, you know, they're using the system to make money. You know, they're they're um, doing the maths and being like, okay, so I'll get banned for two years, but I could make four million off this fight if you know if if it's pay per view points and and you know pay and win money, etc. Yep. Get a bonus, etc. You know, the UFC might claim some of that money back from you. But, um, you know, if, if it comes down to money or, you know, possibly tarnishing your legacy, you know, some people, obviously, have just just decided it's worth it. Yeah, man. Uh, like Ev, Ev said the other night, he, Chael, he right. quoted Chael as, as, like, it's it's the competition of not getting caught. I mean, the guy who springs to mind for me is Vitor. He's one of my favorite top five fighters, mate. And and he's been busted and we know he's doing it, but he's still (laughs) one of my fave top five fighters. And and I don't, and I can't get him out of that picture, but you know, would he have had all that success? Would he be who he was if he hadn't done what he needed to do? I guess needed to do. I'm not sure if that's the right (laughs) word. Chose to do. But, um, yeah, chose you know, and it sucks for some of these. For the, for the it does suck for all the natural guys. But yep. there's that line where where back in the day everyone was cheating, and then and then it's become are uh, you cheating and trying to get away with it, and where and it's a race against you starter, and your doctors trying to keep in front of their doctors, and then and now we're at the point where maybe their doctors are in front and. And it's all collapsing, but you can see why they did it. And, yeah. Well, you know, money is, is one of the biggest motivating factors for everyone, and especially, you know, it's professional athletes. It, it is, you know, for, for many of them, it is it is the number one motivating factor as well. Um, so, yeah. you know, if, you know, if a jab in the ass from a big needle here and there, is going to make you millions of dollars. That's that's an equation that a lot of people would struggle with. I mean, yeah, man. Imagine, you know, you, you've struggled for 10, 15 years. You yeah. get to the point and it's like, here's your title shot or here's your title contention fight and your doctor over here and he and, and your buddy's doing really well and he comes up to you and says, mate, I've got the answer, mate, and, and they don't know, they can't test for it yet. Hmm. You know, if you want to be the champ, and uh, that's got to be, I mean, that must happen every fucking day in those gyms. Oh, dude, the, the, the lion, you know, you know the, 
the line between being the best and just being one of the best is so thin. You know, it, it could be that supplement X that your mates just waltzed into the gym with, you know, designer drugs from his doctor. You know, it could be the extra run you're doing in the morning. But, you know, why why wouldn't you as an athlete try and do as much as you can? But, you know, it's whether you would do that much as to push push the, the boundaries or whether you would just do as much as you can, like, you know, natural athletes, Dan Hooker, Ev Ting, you know, the Kiwi boys, Luke Jumo, who we're going to be catching up with soon, etc. Like, um, big shout out to all those guys and all the natural athletes. Yeah, man. And so I will just change the subject slightly. Gabby Garcia. Uh, she oh. must be the most juiced <laughs> the person the in the world right now. Like, in the fucking world. It's so obvious, but my problem at the moment, she can do whatever the fuck she wants. She's fighting in Russia or whatever. Yeah, my problem yeah. is is MMA fighting, regarded as probably the best, you know, sure dog, MMA fighting, MMA junkie. Those are the top three for sure. All right, easy. Um, they're doing exposés on this chick. They are doing interview after interview. Um, you know, they got Esther Lynn, one of the best photographers in the world, following her around. Why? Why? There must be someone else that they can fucking hype up, you know? Alexa Grasso or fucking anyone else. Like, this, and, well, any of the uh, women who are already active in um, in Victor as a contender, I would, love to, I would love that, you know? This is like the, the biggest cheater right now. Basically, right now she she's just fucking dripping, bro. And and they they just giving her hundred and ten percent attention, and I don't get it. I don't get that at all. Yeah, it's it's she odd, you know. It's, um, so like you know, the power of media as well. You know, you start putting someone in front of everyone's face, and they'll start talking about that person, as as we've seen in the past with some um, other champions built by other federations. Yeah, I just I just. Uh, where's the, the? I don't know, man. If I'm clutching the straws, but where's the integrity of that 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 top three website, man? Is sending out those resources, those their best resources, and fucking and 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 uh, journalists and, and photo journalists, and using it for that, you know? It's um, you know, they they're condoning it uh, in a sense by you know. Well, they're absolutely condoning it by sending those resources out there to cover, promote, and um, market market her. You know, I agree with you. I, you know, from what I've seen of Gabby Garcia, she, I think the word is yoked. <laughs> she's, <laughs> she's cranking, dude. She's cranking. Uh, she's a woman and she's jacked, bro. Yeah, as, she is jacked. As. Like, you know, like, uh, I've been watching a lot of the Olympics recently. Shout out to Valerie Adams taking home that silver. Oh, me. I'm speaking of, like, incredibly jacked women. Um, but, you know, like, some of these female athletes, they have got nothing on Gabby Garcia, you know, and, like, damn, she, she watching her grapple... Like two years ago, um, she was already scary. Now she's got well, a, a tiny bit of striking experience in there. But um, if, did you catch her last fight? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man, I've, I've, I've heard enough about it. And I saw some of her uh, hitting pads with Bobaloo yesterday or the day before, and it was um, atrocious, man. Let me just, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it definitely was. She, um, she was, um, in Vandalay's coaching staff for, um, the original Tough Brazil. And, Yo. man, jacked. Let me just pull up oh, an bro, image. Yeah. Right. But she, um, she's obviously, um, a great athlete in her own right. I think she is. BJJ champion multiple times, but it's not even. It's like fucking her against kids. Bro. Yeah, she she's fighting the tiny. Yeah, because she's so fucking big. Yeah, she's They're normal. Huge. Yeah, I had to get that off my chest. I'm sick of seeing her face on my fucking feed, mate. Because it's this is uh, this is Gabby Garcia right here. <sighs> <sighs> 
Yeah. And that was, you know, next to another another uh, USADA top five, um, Vandalay himself. So yeah, you know, yeah. obviously she's she's been she's been there or thereabouts for a while and you know, if um if you're as good as the company you keep then you know, it's just a bit Yeah, that's my piece on Gabby Garcia, mate. Sorry. Well, speaking of um, non-jacked athletes who um, who I've been a big fan of for a while, Bendo caught up with the bro Ariel Hawani, um, and they had a solid chat. Um, not sure if you caught it. If you did catch it, it was a great chat. They spoke about yep. some of the stuff that you've been speaking with Ev. Uh, they spoke about sponsorship, and yep. um, also uh, something that we just talked about earlier, which is um, the value of fighters. So um, in terms of sponsorship, he said to Ariel Hawani that in his last fight, he had one sponsor in Bellator, and that one sponsor almost matched the 15 grand he was on for his Reebok deal for having 20 fights in the UFC. Yep. Well, in the UFC, Zephyr, you know, the, you know, the entire deal. Umbrella, yeah. So, yeah, so that's almost 15 grand from one sponsor. So, you know, the, the UFC fighters now have got their hands tied with that Reebok deal. So, you know, that's 20 fights. There's not a lot of people who have got 20 fights plus in the UFC. So, um, you know, that's, that's definitely veterans money. And he, he went out, got one sponsor, smashed that. And, um, you know, it's crazy. It's just crazy. The amount of money that he could be making now that he's free of that Reebok deal. Yeah, it's. I mean, um, I, obviously, no one's really said anything good about Reebok. They, Dan Hooker actually said some good things. You know, he 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 thought it was great, guaranteed money, guaranteed all these bag full of clothes and stuff. But um, he's he's one of the minority. I I I know v, uh, no, v, Vitor said he's lost millions of dollars because of Reebok millions and once wow. and he said once i finish fighting i'm gonna be well he this is when vandalay was talking about all fucking trying to change the world but vitor was in the same boat he goes once i'm i'm done i'm gonna fucking i'm gonna step up and and try and change this shit for these young guys because it was he, he said it was bullshit yeah well, it's, yeah, it's tough, man. Like, even speaking of young guys, Mighty Mouse, he had the Xbox deal. The Xbox deal Fuck was yeah. a quarter of a million alone. That's the Xbox deal. Yep. So, yeah. you know, that's, dude, that, no one's sneezing at quarter of a million dollars. Well, nah, bro. Well, you know, yeah, Mighty Mouse, that's all he needed. He had Xbox, and that was it. And fucking, so you. If you cast your mind back to Vitor here, it's Sky fucking TV, some cunt, someone, oops, sorry, my seats, someone there, someone there, someone there, you know, it, it, it would have been up to that crazy money and, and it must be tough pill to swallow, man, real tough. Yeah, you're right. Like, you know, giving up money is tough for anyone, but when you're giving up millions, um, you know, that that would be a bit of pill to swallow, especially when, you know, you're one of the people who made the sport what it is because you know Vitor Balfour he is one of the pillars that MMA the UFC were built on yo I mean yeah man he deserve you you don't get all those sponsors because you fucking don't deserve it you know what I mean yeah he he earned all that shit he earned it and um and got taken away by some people that are already that are four hundred billion dollars mate, and, they take, yeah. and they take that away from you you know what I mean I'm I'm surprised. Well, it's hard for them to speak out, but they I don't know. I'm surprised we haven't heard more about it. Yeah, well, like Dan said when I caught up with him, you know, it's um, with, with for him, you know, as someone with 20 years left in the game, possibly with the UFC the entire time, it's hard to speak openly yeah, about these yeah, things. You know, yeah, yeah. Mark's at at you know, arguably at the twilight of his career. So, you know, for Mark to speak openly about these things, it's, it's a different game for him. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, you're definitely right, man. No one wants to, well, you can get kicked out of the, we, I was, I was thinking about Tyler Mana, Mana Roa the other day. Bro. Oh, dude. Like, what's, what's that can't fucking do it. 
There was you know, he ain't doing shit. He ain't doing because shit. The, you know, yeah, Mal, Maldi like, Fuller says the N word fucking ten yeah. years ago on his Twitter, and he gets yeah. cut down, bro. Like that's it. So they, I mean, they have the power to do whatever the fuck they want. They choose if you fight, and yeah, I can see how a young guy would would not want to say. And then, and then they them getting to UFC is getting paid more than where they were at anyway. So you ain't gonna yeah. fuck that up, you know. No, that's right. You know, like like Ev said to you, you know, he he's um he's the one FC contracts are different. You know, they're they're for a period of time, and um they have guaranteed yeah. fights per year. So, you know, if you know, sounded like Ev was was doing great and loving it, etc. Yeah, yeah, he seemed like he was doing great, and then he was just looking to fight the best. Really, was what he was saying. I think so. Yeah, so we all know where that is. Um, I saw its view of. Kimbo Slice Jr. today. He was doing a live live Facebook feed for Bellator and they the last question for him was would you would you go anywhere else? And he was he was Bellator for life. Like Wow and there, and there's a few there he there was nowhere else for him. Um and he's just getting started, I guess. I've heard the same from a couple of Bellator and they're getting looked after. So it's that chance to earn a, the chance to earn that they they all have. Everyone's on a like you know the Bellator. It's like the UFC used to be. It's like go and get your money. Like we'll put you on a stage. You go and get that money. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. They just need it. They, they could always do better, Bellator. Um, but they um, have a they huge following. Better. Like they have that huge. Um, TV market, like you know, everything they do yeah. is free. They don't do pay per view, so they they get the ratings, man. Yeah, yeah, they're doing all right. Um, I don't get to see much of it. I usually catch replays and stuff of the main fights, but but they obviously have a few uh, ex UFC stars in there, and then you watch, like you, so you see Bendo go over there, and you think, fuck, he's going to tear it up, nah. And then, they didn't tear it up at all. So that that proves their talent oh, pool. You know? Yeah, that, that's right. Just because they're not in the UFC doesn't mean they're not amongst the best in the no. world. Like you know, we saw uh, something you spoke about to Ev, uh, the MF, IWMAF. Um, you know, little old country like New Zealand, we can we can take to that big stage where everything's even. You know, everything's the same, and just just like if you remember the Formula One version of that um, that they had a few years ago where it was country versus country. All the specs were the same. It was basically down to the drivers and the crews. New Zealand just pulled ahead and just showed that when everything is level, we can we can do it. I, yeah, totally. Yeah. Anything you wanted to have a chat about? <laughs> um, I don't know what I want to chat about. Um, I'm looking forward to doing some more interviews. I'm glad. Um, hopefully, oh, yeah. people are enjoying our podcast and our interviews. I know, you know, for me, it was like, does anyone even want to hear fucking me talk, like, realistically? But um, we're going to do it anyway. And, um, and the interviews, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to doing more interviews and, and trying to get some fucking big ones too, some surprising ones that you, you don't think that I can get. That's what I'm going after. <laughs> hey, well, get at us. Anybody, anyone who wants to be on, get at us. Like, you know, we would love to have, have people on. We've got a bunch of people lined up, a bunch of New Zealanders that um, have been doing it on the world stage that, that we've been supporting, and we're just going to get their name out there as well. But uh, anyone who wants to get at us, we're keen. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Kieran Joblin, um, he's fighting. The I'll get some links up. The old, the old stone cutter, which some dude, ah, uh, fucking, they posted it the other day. Some guy did a mini documentary on him and James Bishop um, down at Strike Force. Sorry, it's not Strike Force. It's the uh, Canterbury gym. Those three gyms that all come together. It was a mean documentary. I don't know if you saw it. I'll send it to you soon, bro. Um, Kieran Joblin's fighting twice in the next couple of months, and I want to. I just want to shout out to Kieran Joblin and yeah. Brogan Anderson will be fighting on the same. I think it's CFC. We'll get links up on the pages. But those those Kiwi boys are just fucking awesome. Yeah. 
Yeah, and your interview with Ken Joblin that did a couple of months ago. That what was that? That was your cherry interview. I oh, know Tahuna on the coast uh, back in the day. Uh, yeah, well, Kieran was my f- my cherry um, Skype like shit, and I, I yeah, made yeah. a few mistakes in that, as you do. And I can't wait to do Kieran again, and, and that will be coming in the, the near future. Nice. I'll, I'll check some links in this about um, uh, to that video itself. It's a great interview. Um, and yeah, if you want to catch any of our interviews, they're all on the Combat Sports channel. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess if anyone out there wants us to do someone in particular, you know, fucking tell us, man. Could be a, someone no one's ever heard of. That's even better. Like, that's the best. Let us know, man. Yeah, man. Fuck. Everyone else is, you know, if they've already had 20 interviews, let's do someone else. Also, sometimes you can, some of the best interviews you can get out of someone who hasn't had the limelight as much as, as you know, sometimes those more popular fighters who have had three interviews already that week, for instance, they, they can get a bit tired. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like, um, yeah, I've, I've, I'm going to keep this under wraps, but I've got someone uh, hopefully lined up and they would do the same interview probably every fucking day. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm gonna try and hit it. I'm gonna try and hit it from the side and and and, and do something totally different. And I, I hope I can pull it off. You know, and, and have them excited again about talking about fucking fighting every day, training every day. Brilliant. That's great. You know, and that's that's what we love to do is just get sort of get get a different angle. You know. Yeah, bro. Hard. Moon. So fights next weekend. The big one for you. Come over, bro. Come over. I'll, I'll cook you a steak, <laughs> man. And fucking, um, we can have some, uh, yeah, smokos outside. The uh, big fight for me, I want Rumble to uh, annihilate Glover. And I like Glover. But yeah. I want, I just want the best for Rumble, bro. I just want him to fucking to just do well. Um, there's a couple of others. Neil Magny, I'm looking forward to. I just I, I try I try not to I try almost <clears throat> not not like I like to know the card but I wanna watch every fight and I try to not hype up certain fights that might make me oh I'm gonna go have a ciggy or a coffee now this comes this person's fight. Like because those are the most surprising fights. The the ones you maybe yeah. don't know. Uh, and those are the ones cool. that can be dark, really good. Dark matches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I got twenty bucks. I'm still supporting the Irishman. I know, I know that's no going to get a lot of love out there, but um, I still support the Irishman, <laughs> and I always have. And he's been good to me, uh, because none of my mates support him, and I've had some good times with that dude. So I'm still going Irish all the way. Nice one, nice one. Well, um, yeah, I'm, I, I have very little love for Conor McGregor. Reckon that guy should get back down to his own division if he can still make the weight <laughs> and uh, defend his motherfucking title. <laughs> having other people fight for it. Hey man, let's 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 put some respect on his name, bro. He has made the game. He's changed the game, man. You know, for sure, he, game changer. Like Eddie sure. Alvarez calling out different people. You got you got Tyrone doing his thing, even though that's not going to happen. But he's changed the game, <laughs> like you know. We got Nick Diaz potentially fighting anyone, you know. Well, title, GSP, even though GSP maybe Nick, Nick might have started. Yeah, yeah, GSP. I mean, well, Nick might have started that roller coaster, you know. Well, you know, like um, you know, the, the yeah, the the famous interview, post fight interview with uh, Rogan and Nate Diaz, where Nate Diaz is like Conor McGregor, you you know, taking everything I work for, motherfucker. <laughs> Like, um, that is, you know, one of the classic post-fight interviews. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and even his brother, you know, you know, he was always, he was, he was always into that fight, fight anyone, not really, this is not for a title or a or title contention, you know, it's because I, because this fight makes sense. No, no, no. Put some respect on Conor McGregor's name, man. Put some respect on it. You know what I like? I like I like supporting guys that no one else is supporting. I, I fucking love it. Oh yeah, because no one's supporting Conor McGregor. No one that I know, not in my circle. That's for sure. Now, he's got a lot of support out there, but 
no one that I talk to. They fucking hate them. All right, here we go. Um, cool. So this is next week's card, obviously. Um, the big fight. Rick Story, Donald Cerrone. I forgot about that. That is a great fight. Has to be. Yeah, dude. Look at that. Look, fuck. Look at Rick Story. Yeah, yeah. He's gonna. Uh, he's just come back uh, from uh, USADA holiday, so he's <laughs> looking fantastic. Look at him. Like he's looking jacked. He looks like he was, yeah, I wonder, you know, looks like he was doing a whole bunch of illegal shit on that holiday. Yeah. What's his, has he got his height there? I think he's a short, short guy. 70 inches. What the fuck is that? Hang on. Matt's tall. No. Five foot eight. Oh, yeah, not that, well, yeah, I mean, he looks, but yeah, if you ask look, me to smell test him right now, I would say he failed. Yeah, dude, look at the guy, he's jacked like a motherfucker. Let's, let's appreciate Donald Cerrone in his natural fucking habitat, mate, like, that, there's a natural, that's, that's the natural fighter right there. Yeah, absolutely. Good on him. Who is this fucking guy? Legend. Who is this dude? Who is this guy? Where? Where? Perry. Oh, I don't even have Perry. Um, I don't know, bro. <laughs> he might Platinum be a Mike great Perry. replacement or something. <laughs> <laughs> it must be his first fight. Oh, I know yeah, this too. Yeah, he's got zero six, stats. Oh, no. Yeah. He, he must wow. be good. How do you get... He must be a replacement, bro. Because he's on the fucking main card. Mate. When's CM Punk? Oh, what? Uh, when CM Punk? Not sure, bro. Did you oh, watch the documentary they put out on him? I did not. That sounds funny. Sounds terrible. <laughs> I didn't want to say it, but yeah. Yeah. Neither. Neither. I didn't watch it either. This um this is the fight, Cody Garbrandt. This is this is um basically what he's talking about. He's like um he said Cruiser got the title shot after fighting Takeo Mitsugaki and, and beating him. So if he beats Mitsugaki, he's he's basically saying it's on. Cruiser's saying, Let's do this then. Well, why are your mouth shut, bruh? Oh, one of my favorite female fighters, Random Marcos. <laughs> Randa. Because Courtney Casey. She's always a gamer, Randa. She just man, she just fights so hard. Yeah, let's just go back to Cody and Mizugaki. That's um, not a bad fight. Um, I mean, he has to not only win, though, but win convincingly. Yeah, to get he a can't shot win in over, the over, over minutes. Yeah, bro, you know, he has to go out there and, and dominate. And because he, let's not compare him with, with Dominic Cruz. Cruz. You know, he was the, the, the champ, you know. He can beat the number fucking ten or eleven and still get a title shot. It's it's different different apples and oranges, mate. Well, this also plays to something that Dan Hooker said when he said the the rate the rankings are not with the paper that they're written on because you know you got right. number eight and eleven facing off here, and then if number eight wins, he's going straight to the title shot. It's like what? <laughs> yeah, and I'm fine with that. Um, yeah. the rankings it's I mean it's always been what the fans want hasn't it it's always been like that you yeah, know we so. try we try and put the three and the four together and the one and the two together but in the in the, in the scheme of things bro I, if enough people talk about that fight then do it yeah it's probably fucking Dominic's probably been in two three four and five anyway <laughs> he is the is right? probably. He probably has a. What else you got on there, bro? Oh, Raquel Pennington. Mm. And yeah, I can't read it from here. Phillips. Someone. Elizabeth Phillips. Oh, you got fucking uh, Connor's uh, right hand man there, or what's his name? Lobov. Lobov. Yeah, that's it. Ar- Artem. Artem Lobov. Uh, the, the Russian Emma. 
against uh, <laughs> versus an- another shadow Sky. fighter. Chris, Fuck, he's twelve and twelve. Um, but... Dude, how does it? He's that, that's, that's, clearly that speaks the, by put, put, in put some respect. Yeah, by put some respect, some more respect on Conor McGregor, by because that dude. <laughs> Uh, that's why he's there, dude. He's taking his boys with him. Twelve and twelve. What about that's old funny. Neil Magny? The beast. Neil Magny and Rens Larkin. Man, that's, that's right. a hell of a fight. I then I gotta go. What do you, Neil Magny? He's he's already yeah. beaten someone who is arguably more dangerous than Lorenz Larkin, but in the same mold when he beat. Um, What's his name? Aussie lives in Aussie from Cuba. Hector. Hector. Hector Lombard. Hector Lombard. Son that of was, that was a great. Yeah, that was a great fight just for the fact that Hector just Man. deserved that. He deserved that, and it was yeah. great to watch. Yeah, man, it was it was excellent, excellent. Yeah, so uh, Lorenz Larkin, obviously, a very dangerous striker. But um, man, Magni Magni's a beast. You know, he he looks like he could fight for fifteen minutes. Yeah, and then and from the heck the fight, now we know he can take a fucking ass kicking and still come back and win. Bounce, I mean, it, it was just about out. This card's I haven't really looked into it, but it's looking not bad at all. Yeah, that no, looks great, eh? It's um, it's kind of just crept up. You know, it was, feels like it was two weeks ago. That we we had just watched two oh one, um, you know. So, um, what do you think about this? Like early prelims, they got that that good fight on there last. Yeah. You know, they used to great. have three nobodies on there. I think it's yeah, yeah. Awesome. I think it's smart. It's smart as like, shit. I'm like you. You know, I've always watched from fight one to to the main event. You know, I've I've, I've always watched the early prelims all the way through. Yeah. Then you know, watch the prelims all the way through, and then watch the main card. Just because you know, any fight could be the fight. Yeah, yeah. There's I I don't I don't get the guys. Well, you they must be new, but oh, there's no names on this card. Who gives a fuck? Yeah. Names don't make cunts. I can have wars, mate. The new the new guys are usually fighting for their lives, mate. Like, don't yeah. worry about don't worry about their name. It's it's nice to have on the on the poster and shit, and it can get you excited. But for me and you and anyone I know that's really into it, right? It, scraps are scrap, mate. And, and you know those big names. Happen. You know, like you say, sometimes those big names have got so much to lose that I don't want to lose anything. So yeah, you know, yeah. careful. We've seen, yeah. yeah, we've seen big names. Cut down a fight because they would rather win over twenty five minutes than lose at all. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. and they know so much about each other that they cancel each other out and fucking, yeah. you know, they know what the other guy's going to do. And they're so cautious. Of any, any of the last sort of eight to ten GSP fights, you know, that that's what that's kind of what you're talking about there. Like a guy who is so well honed at shutting opponents down and doing the things he's good at that. You know, those fights become non-fights in the end. Here's one I know that you're looking forward to. Rumble, Glover. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't look forward to that? I mean, yeah, two big thing. power hitters. So these, these, you, these, you know, you're saving, if you're talking about fucking uh, ranking systems, these are your one and two going at it. <laughs> true, you know, true. it happens. It happens. Yeah. It happens more there often than not, really. These guys are well. Cerrone has dropped to fourteenth. Yeah, yeah, I guess he has. <laughs> he obviously has. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, yeah, so that's a man, that's a good card. The Dirty Bird just slipped right under the radar there, fighting Is another he? Shadow Fighter and Sabah Homasi, the Punisher. The Punisher. The dirty bird. Uh Tim Means. Yeah, good on him. He's still going hard. No, solid fight. I, I love watching Tim yeah. Means fight. Yeah. There you go. This guy's there not goes. even from a country. This guy has no record, no country. He's from, like, from that refugee state that fucking in the Olympics. Kazakhstan. 
But yeah, so that is a main fight, main card. So that's, you know, usually the cards are kicking off um, with time difference, usually kicking off between sort of 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., the early prelims. So that's good timing for New Zealand. Yeah, I yeah, I enjoy it. It's good. It's, it's you know, Saturday night would be better, but hey, Sunday, Arvo is just as good. I, what was I listening to the other day? It was that you know the Manchester fight with Bisping and Hendo? Yeah, yeah. They'll they'll be walking out and fighting at four o'clock in the morning. Awesome, that's great. Reminds me of like the old days, getting up and watching like Premier League. No, no, no. They will be fighting. Dan Hendo's yeah. got a like. Uh, no, no, four o'clock. It's not playing local here. Time. It's not playing here for. They will be at local time in Manchester. Dan Hendo will I be walking they, into the cage at yeah. four in the fucking morning. I thought the UFC stopped doing that to prioritise it for US broadcasting time. They, they must have. Well, it's a pay per view, right? It's, but yeah, they didn't it's, like they they had stopped doing that, um, like making the fighters fight at ridiculous local times just so that it fits into the prime time in this, in the U S but obviously that's, that's not the case now. Yeah. So his plan is to just fly there and pretend it's still the same time as not even where, he was, time where he was at because yeah. then, then to him, it's the same. This yeah. going to have to fuck change though, no matter what he's probably slowly changing. Yeah, but that, man, that's a bit of a bit of a variable for you know the fight those fights, you know. See, like it's like you know, obviously the prior, you know, that that tells you what the priority is. Oh, of course, I've that's See, always yeah, known what the priority is, bro. Yeah, that's the priority. something. Um, something we haven't spoken about yet. Speaking of priorities, fighters' union. Something you you oh. spoke, We've spoken briefly about it. Um. What do you know about unions, bro? Because I don't know anything. I've been part of unions in the past uh, when you sign collective uh, employment agreements, etc. And um, yeah, I only know them to be great as an employee. Um, I only yep. know them to be great. You know, they're they're a great tool for employees to leverage the company to get what they want. Um, different scenario when you're talking about a whole bunch of individual contracts and individual employees which yes. is the case in, in the fight game, in the UFC, et cetera. Like, um, yes. yeah, but if you look at the NBA, those guys are all on different term contracts, different money. Some people are on 10 game contracts. Some guys have got a one year contract for 4 million. Some guys have got a three year contract for 108 million. So, you know, they have a, um, they have an NBA players association. NBA Players Association caused the lockout a few years ago. There's probably another lockout coming in a couple of years with the okay. way politics in the NBA are going. So if you look at that as a blueprint for the potential for a Players Association slash union in the UFC, that, yeah. that yeah. you know, potential, there's potential there. Like, I'm, I'm not au fait on what the differences and similarities are in that scenario. But um, yeah. absolutely, there's potential. That's good, man. You know, obviously, I want the best for all the fighters. Um, the As four billion dollar talk- price tag. Hey, yeah, four point nine, almost five, four point nine billion. But like, you know, as you and he talked about, yeah, you said to him. Uh, you know, it's like, is that fair, or have you already decided your value when you sign that dotted line? You know, and that that question so, really yeah. kind of resonated with me. I was like, you know, effectively, you have already signed your value. Yeah, you go in there um, and, and they say, hey, we're going to pay you 20 grand to fight, 20 grand to win. And, and you either say, fuck yes, man. I mean, I'll be getting fucking $500. Or you say, well, actually, I'd like 30. And you sit down and I don't really know what it's like, man. They, they, they make it out like it's a fucking, some kind of like Dana White's like, no, no, this is how. He probably doesn't even, I don't know, bro, but yeah, you're independent. First of all, you're an independent contractor and you sign your own worth in a contract. And the second yeah. thing is the union has to be accepted by the UFC 
like you can have all the unions you want. That's right. They have to work. They have to work together for the fucking, you know, to make everything better. That's right. I, the the USB has to acknowledge the union and give the union power. Otherwise, I, the union the union can dict. You know, it's like if me, you and I create a fighters union, and we're like, nah, we don't believe you're paying Dan Hooker enough money. You pay him money right now, or that's it. Like you know, that means nothing. Yeah. That means absolutely nothing. Yeah, let, well, let's let's break it down a little bit more. Um, a main event, a star. At the moment, I believe they get it's around about five hundred grand for a fight, right? A Daniel Cormier, someone like that. That's for Have a title. Holder. I think that's for a title holder with uh, under the Reebok deal. Is that, is that or you're talking about the UFC deal? No, I'm not talking about your Reebok at all. Uh, it's and that's what they get paid, like say DC or you know five hundred Gs. Say say a title Sorry. holder. 500 Gs. I thought that, like, say say you signed a eight title fight, sorry, eight, eight fight contract, and then on your third fight you won the title. I didn't know that you would be then on a different pay scale. I thought, you know, you've got five fights left on your shitty old non-champion contract. Yeah, they, they you get a new, you get a new contract. I don't know if it's fucking every single person, but the majority of them sign a new contract when they get the title. Wow, oh, okay. That's pretty good. Yeah, so... So the union comes in and what are they going to do? Make a base for your first five fights or... It's, um, you know, that, that's, that's effectively what a union does is they... They negotiate the contracts. Uh, they negotiate. They have like a collective bargaining power uh, as a union, whereas an individual doesn't have, in, in many cases, doesn't have the power to to bargain their their value. Which is yeah. it's it's kind of where the the confusion comes in here because, you know, like you guys discussed and and we've discussed, you've already signed that check you know you've sorry you've already accepted that check and that check was based on the value that you thought you held at the time so it's kind of yeah. like a paradox yeah yeah um i don't know chael sonnen on his podcast said this obviously his fighters are um, managed by managers and he yeah. he reckons there's only about five or six or seven actual managers and they handle most of those fighters so oh. he, he believes you know it's really should be in these guys hands i mean that's i don't fucking know where i'm going with this but well the, the, i'd like I, I guess what you're saying is there's already a handful of representatives uh in those managers so really yeah. if those if those guys could make it official, make a conglomerate like a manager's association or something that, that works for the fighters, then that they are the ones who really have the power to approach the UFC and say, no, no, my fighter's not going to do this, and his fighter's not going to do this, our fighters are not going to do this, unless this is the minimum that all fighters from now on are getting paid. That's a huge, that's a huge um, industrial action move, though. Yeah, yeah, it is. Um Another point is that four and a half billion or whatever. When you when you compare that to it to the NBA or the NFL, that's like one uh, team. You know what I mean? That's not the worth of a whole fucking NBA. It's one no, team. No. At, yep. And these guys have got five hundred plus fighters they got to pay, not fucking. 20 people or yeah you know, I don't know how much well, the, money. There's, there's obviously more the, money the there staffing. but yeah the staffing of a um, of a NBA basketball association like a, a franchise in the NBA the Lakers etc would be huge uh, potentially yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. potentially um, a big market team like that would rival the UFC in terms of employees worldwide so yeah you know. that's that's sort of what I'm getting at 
that one team and they, <coughs> well, I guess you're, yeah, you've made that point there, then they can pay those guys that much money. Or where, where's that money? Yeah, like, you know, the, yeah. um, uh, the, sorry, the LA Lakers were worth $2.6 billion, um, in 2015. So that's, that's, probably the most valuable team in the NBA went for just just over half of what the UFC went for. But, um, you know, that's, that's the team's estimated value. Like, if they were actually to sell that team, then, you know, the the actual value would be realised then, and, and who knows how much someone would pay to own the Lakers. Yeah, yeah, it goes, uh, it, can be, it can be bought for more than it's actually worth. For sure. Oh, got hard, man, look, really look at the it. housing market in New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, so, yeah. Um, that that's that's all good points. But um, you know, uh, I'd love to actually get someone on here who was a bit more of a union expert. That might be something that we can look at for the coming weeks, even just to to have that discussion. Yeah. Yeah, they'd be good. To, like I said, I, I don't really know enough. Like I'm just, just bits of info that's that I've that yes, I've heard. Sir. Like I only know the real world applications as, I, as I've experienced them as an employee. Uh, you know, I've never been an employer in a company big enough to have a union. Yeah, yeah. All right, me bro. Should we um okay. should, should we knock this one out? Yeah, man. Okay, yeah, we went by pretty quick. Uh, we, it was fun, man. It was good. That's well, always good. I'm going to cut the broadcasting. Yeah, Thanks bro. for watching, everybody. From yeah, myself, man. JB, and from this dude. Yeah, kia ora, everyone. Thanks for fucking lending us your ears. I hope we didn't bore you too much. Um, let us know. And send us a comment, man. Give us some shit. Give us some praise, whatever. Yeah. Let us know you're there. Yeah, that's it. All right. Sweet. Later, everybody. <laughs>